Now, the most important use of universal introduction as a rule is in conditional generalization. This is where we say, supposing that of some constant c, selected arbitrarily, if c is an f, then c is a g. Well, since this held for an arbitrarily selected object, we can generalize and say all f's are g's. That is, everything is such that if it's an f, then it's a g. Let's see how this works. Now, most universal claims don't take the form of unconditional universal predications of the form ax, px, that is to say, everything is a p. There are certain predicates that work with this, like, for instance, everything is an object or everything is a thing, but these aren't really that interesting. What we want to be able to do is to make proofs of conditional statements of the form every f is a g. And we do this by making use of our arbitrary names again. So suppose that we want to prove that all f's are g's. We assume that e, e in these examples has been just our arbitrary constant. We assume that e is an f, we derive in the course of a conditional proof that e is a g. That gets us the conditional statement, if e is an f, then e is a g. And then we can apply universal generalization to say that all f's are g, since again, this constant e here just is arbitrarily selected. What's going on when we do this is a bit of a tricky question to answer. And I actually just read a book called Reasoning with Arbitrary Objects by Kit Fine, which tries to grapple with this question, what these arbitrary objects are. In any case, here's an example of how this can work in action. Suppose we want to prove the statement, all mammals are animals. Well, here's how we go about constructing our proof. We just pick an arbitrary mammal, call it M. We don't have any commitment to what kind of mammal M is, it's just some arbitrary mammal. And we derive that, in fact, that mammal is an animal. And this entitles us to conclude that all mammals are animals. That is to say, for any arbitrary object picked out by our constant M, if M is a mammal, perhaps it would make it a little bit clearer to change this F to an M, if M is a mammal, then M is an animal, and since we aren't speaking about any mammal in particular, we can conclude generally that all mammals are animals. This kind of proof is very common in mathematical reasoning, and that's precisely why it exists as a part of FOL. But it's worth noticing that we don't actually have a special rule for general conditional proof, since to return to our original derivation, this line here near the bottom is just conditional introduction, and this bottom line here is just universal introduction. That's the basic idea. Most proofs constructed in this way don't deal with mammals and animals, but with mathematical objects. But I think it's easier to focus on the mammals and animals because of their familiarity first, and talk about the mathematical examples second.